blessings and greetings from the Himalayas, uh, mountains of India, to all of you. I'm so honored to be here. Thanks to Dan, who has given me this opportunity to share a little uh, about mountain wind. Um, the first thing I must say is that I'm a bit nervous public speaker because I have a very mutually uneasy kind of relationship with internet technology. So as I told you, if, if I disappear in between for a little while, please don't mind. It happens with me. I have this hostile history. So yeah, I hope, I hope that doesn't happen. But anyway, um, uh, Mountain Wind is actually uh, a hands-on creative learning program uh, of my organization called the Himalayan Reeling Foundation in the Northwestern Himalayan region in India. Um, it was an individual dream that became a kind of shared vision and one which I hope to extend to all of you and throughout the world at some point. It's very small scale. It's actually currently poised for takeoff still on the runaway and looking for a co-pilot and crew kind of thing. Um, like all startups, it's had its uh, challenges. Um, I kind of believe that all dreams begin with a deep desire to maybe, you know, want a change in status quo or uh, a sense of wanting to better our world. So when one recognizes something that one feels is wrong or identify some limitations and anomalies to the condition thinking and social structures around us. You know, I think dreams are born of that maybe. Um, and so the underlying principle behind Mountain Wind is also, um, you know, all it stands for is also kind of a felt need to redefine learning, redefine education. I deliberately use learning in place of education as the first step towards this renovation. Um, we are talking about uh, reimagining education. And I think when I was in school, I think it began at that point when, you know, in the last years of my school, I felt quite rebellious with the system. And I could sense that there's something basically wrong. Of course, that's in retrospect, and I didn't quite know what I was doing at the time, but in this whole unlearning and learning trek of my life, uh, I've sort of come to this kind of expression of uh, learning or reimagining education. And I hope, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna keep evolving organically. And so I'm just gonna, I think, not make it too voice heavy and put some slides in the background um, so that, you know, uh, get a sense of the place that we're trying to build um just give me a second i'm going to share my screen so i just started talk a little bit about the vision or what's behind Mountain Wind. So Mountain Wind is basically about a different way of learning um, and a different kind of learning. So Mountain, it's, it's a kind of an attempt to create an ideal kind of, well, there's nothing ideal, but ideal, trying to create a kind of ideal, let me say, learning environment for post-school learners, which is non-hierarchical, progressive, and flexible. And it's primarily kind of based on ethical and experiential life skill learning. So it's more hands-on. It's not, you know, typically boxed or compartmentalized, um, not sequential, but cost-based, you know, with the intermixing or inter intergenerational uh, learning. It's also gonna be self-assessed and evaluated and not entirely theoretical, but more experimental and kind of exploratory. So it's kind of being looked at as a, a multi-skill kind of learning course that uh, courses that offer hand and land skills with a kind of strong uh, ethical base. So a first step towards kind of creating a learning community that is wholly committed to learning and protecting the earth. Um, so 
it's been uh, it's been quite a long ongoing journey to get to this point and uh, i just feel like you know once we can begin then things will begin to shape up a little more um share with you um mountain wind is basically looked at as like i said for a, a place where or a platform where you know people come together for creative pursuit for social experiential and ethical learning and also a learning environment that really allows people to express freely to question and have respectful dissent all of these i feel which as spaces that are diminishing in our world today so also a place that kind of inculcates the sense of a common world community with a deep respect for its inherent diversity i think uh, trying to create homogeneity is also a very strong uh, anomaly in the education systems at least that we find in our in our region and uh, i would certainly like to disrupt or dismantle that a place also that you know nurtures and reunites us with our forest roots what i call forest roots because most of our education systems seem to take us away rather than towards and i feel that at that point is where you know we lose our connect and and begin the destruction that of the earth that you know is so visible today i'm just sort of taking you a little bit through the uh campus to kind of uh just just give you a feel of you know what one is thinking and how this is like a vision led kind of design so i feel like you know physical designs should embody the vision and if they do then they are they are able to actually propel learning in the kind of learning that they are supposed to so um yeah learning happens you know all the time and everywhere and perhaps more so when you least expect it to um the importance of this kind of learning is mostly disregarded in our systems you know formal systems of education and so you know the spaces that one is trying to create in our a very small campus uh are sort of hopefully designed to bring people uh you know to give space to that kind of learning let me say um so the physical environment i feel is like a uh, very important and it can intentionally create that mental space for learning and uh the outdoors or the natural environment is a place that fosters learning a uh, deep learning when we are in touch with the natural ecology of an environment in a green setting i think learning happens more naturally and is more inclusive uh our model is such that we the vision behind this is also that uh, all kind of learning should cater to every kind of individual another thing that is you know we find missing in our formal system i believe that we are designed to learn and evolve and an ideal learning kind of environment should support the learning of every kind of individual so uh, mountain wind is looked at as a place where there is free reflection and discussion gentle kind of dissent and posturing of a questioning attitude um and i think learning most often begins and ends with a question and so it's a never ending search for answers and exploration so to my mind it's like the emotional atmosphere also of a learning environment that makes it uh you know that actually supports learning the creation of the atmosphere that inspires or enables effective learning comes primarily from facilitators and i believe that also from the organizational philosophy and it should be stress free because as soon as you go into stress your brain basically doesn't function goes into survival mode 
whereas our performance based graded kind of systems of learning are do exactly the opposite i feel what education should do so in a place that where people feel safe you know and they don't feel judged is very important and hopefully one can create spaces like that so that they also you know so you sit you sit more around a circle you sit around a table and there's no one person you know handing stuff down to you since we are from the himalayan region and the, our foundation is the kind of kind of based in the himalayan region not in a communal sort of regionalistic sort of way but because the himalayas belong are a very special part of this earth they control world climate and have a huge biodiversity uh, i mean are a huge biodiversity zone so um it's important to protect the actually cultural identity of the himalayas which is often uh, you know absorbed in a larger system or where where the mountains or the himalayan voice is really heard so I felt that you know the there's a recognizable kind of cultural identity even in the form and elements and without it being purely traditional we call our main center the morung the morung is a life skill learning center from the eastern himalaya tradition uh where many tribes used to have this kind of life skill learning institution which brought the community together and that same spirit one wants to embody in our place so our primary learning center is called the moro uh so re re kind of configuring it to our context today you yeah. know so translating like the vernacular kind of heritage that we have or the himalayan language and connecting our entire himalayan region in the physical space was also important here there's a lot of use of natural uh, materials with a sort of like a simple kind of uh toned down aesthetic and natural soothing kind of finishes with natural materials and a lot of reclaimed materials as well um this kind of translates from the fact that we have a strong commitment to the protection of the earth and uh, so one is use more uh, reclaim wood uh, things that were thrown away waste materials stuff that came out from a different construction and uh, yeah so it's a small two building campus uh, with a hostel cafe and a dormitory accommodation and uh, which houses about 10 participants from anywhere on the planet can come and share learning so um to spa save space you know the spaces are like there's a use of attic roofs uh and a frames so that keeps the scale low of the building and even though it's a new campus one we like uh, hopefully feels the deep connect to the ecology and natural beauty around us around uh the buildings the last slide will basically uh talks about how we want to create both individual and collective learning spaces so there's spaces for reflection you know and you're not you you you're not being dictated you don't feel always dictated to so there's a egalitarian kind of sense or a non hierarchical sense in the seating in the kind of so called classrooms i mean which are mostly outdoors stone circles uh, looking out onto the you know uh, green outside green spaces outside so there are kind of multiple kind of learning spaces and mostly all of them have a connect or extend to the out, outer natural environment um i think i think that sort of closes or you know since we haven't started there's not a lot that i can share with you and i i'm just looking and hoping to uh, that these these spaces will be populated soon and it's just an introduction uh 
to the thought process behind mountain wind. And do you know the define learning uh, in the sense that where learning is, um, you, uh, sorry, there's a, what I feel is like there's a basic need to kind of dismantle or overturn the system of formal education. And, you know, when children and adults can roam the forest, you know, smell the flowers, not be afraid of the bee, and be around trees, work the land. Uh, I think that causes the personal transformation which education should, should cause. Because education is, I think, I mean, should be about personal transformation. And formal systems of education don't, don't do that. They couldn't because they aren't geared to do that. So for I think true change comes from within ourselves. And if we need to change anything, that has to happen first. That transformation should happen first. And degrees and various things that the formal education system seems to be like just your you just give back the information that you gathered, you know, in the best possible way. That doesn't really, that doesn't cause the learning or the transformation that education should be. So I think in the spirit uh, of the mountain wind that is free flowing, that touches everything, that lends its fragrance to uh, all, all that's in its embrace. It brings joy naturally. And through all that, it transforms. It's that spirit. And if only we can be that way. And the sense of the mountain wind is all one feels that, you know, when we reimagine or redefine education or learning, hopefully, you know, that spirit uh, we can imbibe. Mm -hmm.